Well, it's Monday, and just welcome to all those that are joining me on the live feed this today. And yes, um, it is a little windy because I am outside. I just could not resist um, coming outside to the sunshine, the blue sky, the warm temperatures. Uh, it's kind of like a little miracle here in central PA. So I uh, just wanted to join with you here as we uh, are in day eight of actually sorry day nine i'm a day behind day nine of our 40 days of prayer and fasting and uh you know just knowing that we are going to press in to pray today for praying in the prodigals and i thought what better place to be than to be in one of my favorite god spots which is outside when I was young, this is a place that I used to pray every day and just walk outside, go for walks and sing songs to God. And so it's beautiful. So we are outside. So if you are with me, I just encourage you again to let me know. Give me a little like or something so that you can hear me okay. Um, but I'm going to keep pressing in and read our scripture text for today. So the text for today is Psalm 68, verse 6. It says, God sets the solitary in families. He brings out those who are bound into prosperity. There's two things that I just want to take a moment to focus in on in this verse, in this passage of scripture. The first one is solitary. That, you know, God sets the solitary in families. And one thing that we hear over and over again, our studies, uh, even in our country, in America, about the loneliness, the epidemic of loneliness that people are feeling. And even though we've got people all around us, we have social media, like we're con or connecting right now, that actually the more and more people that connect through social media and forsake coming together an actual face-to-face -face interaction, that uh, people are feeling lonely because we need to come together. We need to see each other to um, be able to have that face-to-face -face connection that social media can't bring. Now, we're thankful for being able to connect this way, but we need to come together. And in fact, that was what we uh, were pressing into on day seven, which would have been this past Saturday, growing together with others. We need to come together. We need to have that time to fellowship. And that God's desire is to place people in families that feel lonely. So that's one of the things we're pressing into as we pray for the prodigals is, are those people around us that feel like they don't have a place, they don't belong, that they can come together um, in our church or if you're watching from other places, that they will connect where you're at and to be able to experience the love of God. The second half of the scripture, he brings out those who are bound into prosperity being bound i think of those that are bound with addiction with um loneliness and also with fear there are a lot of people that are bound with fear right now and again we keep bringing up the coronavirus but as we know that's being talked about all over in our media and how they're encouraging people to you know stay away if you're not feeling well but also it's um inhibiting people being able to come together and so just knowing that you know we don't have to be bound by a spirit of fear we want to take you know uh, precautions when we need to if we're not feeling well obviously i don't want to share my germs or viruses any of them with other people but if we're healthy to know that we can go out that we can gather with people and that we don't have to be in fear because as we are connected with god and that is, again, this whole prayer of the prodigals, of knowing that there are people around us that don't know the love of God. And we want to share his love with others. And so that they, as they experience God's perfect love, that we don't have to walk in fear, that people around us don't have to walk in fear. Because, as scripture tells us, perfect love casts out all fear. And there is one place we can find perfect love, and that is in God, our Father. So as we continue to pray for the prodigals, and we're going to take a few moments to pray uh, shortly in this, to know that God 
is bringing in the prodigals. You know, uh, those of us that are part of Christ's community have been praying over the past few months, and we have gathered over 500 names of people that are praying for loved ones to come in. And as we say prodigals, you know, we're not just talking about people like the prodigal son who knew the love of their father but walked away and were asking for them to come back, but we're also praying for those that have never tasted or known the love of God, that we are agreeing with prayer for those that have never known salvation, that they would come to know God's saving grace and his love. And over the past two weeks, we have seen people, names that people have written down and we've been praying over. We've heard testimonies of them coming to Christ. So I want to encourage you now that if there are people you are praying for, that God is moving on your behalf that God hears our prayers, and that he longs for people to come to him. He desires, his desire is that all would be saved. And again, as I shared last week, the word all definition means all. We are believing with God that everyone we are lifting up will be saved. And we are hearing testimonies. Again, I heard one yesterday morning of someone who is involved in drugs, actually went to jail and has now come out of that. They are going through our own Celebrate Recovery. And I want to encourage you, if you know anyone that's dealing with drug or alcohol addiction, any hurts, hang-ups, um, to come out tonight. At Christ Community Church, we offer Celebrate Recovery. We also offer PALS, which is Parents of Addicted Loved Ones, also for spouses or family members of addicted loved ones. We have groups here that can stand with you, and you can see people get free of these addictions, but also come to know the love of their Heavenly Father, as I heard that great report yesterday of another one receiving Christ. We are so happy to be able to pray with you and to know that God is moving. Another scripture I want to share in Malachi before we pray is another promise of God we are standing on. Malachi 4, 6 says, And he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. We know that God is moving right now on our behalf. So as we take a few minutes to pray, I'm going to encourage you to lift up the names of loved ones, to continue to press in and pray, because we are seeing loved ones being restored, coming back to faith in Christ, being set free from addiction, from, pe from fear, from grief, from trauma. Our Heavenly Father loves to set his children free. So let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this beautiful day and just a reminder of your love, your goodness, your faithfulness. Father, your promises never fail us. So Lord, as we take just a moment, even now, we're going to pause. And actually, I have some worship music pulled up. So I'm going to take 30 seconds and I'm going to encourage you. As we listen to this, and we believe God's presence is coming upon us to lift up the names of those that you are praying for. So just lift them up now between you and God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for drawing them in. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. So, Father, right now we pray in agreement with the names of those lifted up. Father, as we continue to believe that you are drawing the prodigals and the loved ones back to you, Lord, that you will reach them, that your love will push through anything they're dealing with, any anxiety, any fear, any guilt, any condemnation, Lord, that your love right now is reaching them. Because, Father, you are above time. You are 
above distance, Lord, it doesn't matter where they are. Lord, that as we pray, your angels are going out, your ministering angels, Lord, to reveal your love to them. So, Father, we just thank you, Lord, that these loved ones that we have been lifting up and longing to come to know you, Lord, by the end of this 40 days of prayer and fasting, Father, that they will come to know you, that we will hear the good reports and the testimonies, Lord, of them receiving your saving grace. So, Father, we thank you for your love that is never ending. Lord, we thank you that while we were yet sinners, you died for us. So, Father, even as these ones may be caught up in whatever has held them away from you, Lord, that your love will surpass it all. And, Lord, your love will draw them in, Father, and they will experience the joy of your saving grace. And, Father, the freedom that your love brings. Because, Father, we just declare Galatians 5.1, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. So, amen. And, Father, we just thank you, Lord, for those that have joined us today. Thank you for coming out. Thank you for uh, being with me. Again, if you have any prayer needs, I encourage you to let us know because we are praying for you. Um, share these posts. Share this feed. We would just want to encourage others and know that God is moving in our community, in our cities, in our nation, and around the world. So, until tomorrow, have a blessed day. And amen.